Anthony Mangalong. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. I will be very brief because I think many of the points have already been made. But what I would like to do is try and give a further southwest example of the problems that we are facing, and in particular the problems we're facing in rural and coastal communities, because the problem is, uh, the problem is sizable, the requirement to respond to it is urgent, and as has been said by so many colleagues from across the House, um, this is an issue that we must grip now, because if we let this slide, it is only going to get worse and worse, and the backlog is only going to get bigger and bigger. Um, the Honourable Gentleman from Sheffield Central was right to say that, like buses, it's good to have two debates on this, and I was sorry not to be able to make my comment known yesterday, but I was particularly struck with some of the positive developments that have come out of the department, most, ne most notably that urgent care is back to pre-pandemic uh, pre levels since December 2020, that there are 700 centres for urgent care, that there has been £50 million made available to encourage 350,000 extra appointments, and that there is an urge and a push to upskill uh, dental nurses, dental assistants and dental technicians. I think these are all very, very welcome steps. Unfortunately, and I don't mean to be critical of the government on this because I know full well the minister who has responded to a number of my letters on this issue has spoken to me at length on the issues that we're facing in South Devon. Um, there are a few outstanding issues that I hope um, she might be able to take on board and that I hope might also be willing to listen to some of the suggestions that I and colleagues um, have already made and are due to make. Um, so just in terms of the uh, five areas that I'm seeing a significant problem. It's already been raised about children uh, not getting access to dentists. I would actually also like to make the point about pensioners. I have had a countless number of constituents contact me who cannot get access to the very necessary services they require in, their, in, in dentistry. Um, we must find a way in which we can address that. And children or pensioners alike, we can find a way through this. And the problem that I'm seeing in my own patch of Totnes and South Devon is that dentists aren't taking on new patients. And in fact, to give it into a concentrated example, there is one practice within 15 miles of Totnes that is accepting um, patients, and in that instance it's only children, and at this point we understand that they may already, already have been oversubscribed and therefore unable to see people in a reasonable time frame. This is a real problem that, as others have already said, is becoming more and more exacerbated uh, as, as, as time goes by. Um, the third point I want to make on this is also about urgent dental care centres. Now I've heard about 700 of them being set up across the country. I'm actually not aware of one that is dealing with my constituents. Um, in fact, when people use the hotline to even contact the NHS to discuss this, they can't get through. So I have constituents in considerable, considerable pain contacting the helpline and not even able to get through to be able to convey their point. That really does need to be addressed because, frankly, it's bad enough not being able to see a dentist. It's perhaps even worse not being able to talk to someone about the help you need. And it is also perhaps reflective on why we are seeing so many people ending up in A&E with problems with their teeth as a result. And actually, that would probably help if we can ad address this issue. It would help um, the A&E numbers on this side. Um, now, the Minister, has, as, as ever, is assiduous in responding to uh, our letters and our correspondence, and I hope she won't um, uh, take this the wrong way, but one of the letters I wrote to her, I had a response regarding um, the fact that um, it may be helpful to note that patients are registered with a dental practice only during the course of their treatment, meaning there are no geographical restrictions on which practice a patient may attend. Um, she has been to South Devon, I'm sure. If she hasn't, she's very welcome. It couldn't be a better time to visit over the summer. Our geography is very difficult at the best of times. We don't have rail lines. Um, they were all ripped up in the 1950s. Our bus services have been cut back. There are no major uh, routes even between the major towns in my constituency and the hospitals, and I think of Dartmouth and Kingsbridge in that example. If we don't have the transport system to be able to help people get to those practices, then the geography matters a great deal. And we are really, really going to have to focus on a response to how the uh, rural and coastal communities are addressed in this, because I think they are at a significant disadvantage, as was said by the member from Kent and Lincolnshire earlier in this debate. Um, the fifth point I want to make, it is welcome about the £50 million that's been made available to the South West, as I understand it, um, but the percentage that has been awarded to the South West is 9% which equates to, if my, if my maths is good enough, and it's certainly probably not as good as the member for uh, Cornwall, um, but that's £4,726,000. 
that isn't going to be enough to de deal with the issues of what is classed as the southwest, which is Somerset, Dorset, Devon, and Cornwall, and the sizable problems we have in that. Um, I said I wouldn't take long, Mr. Chairman, so I just want to end um, with a few points that I hope the Minister will take on board and we can find a solution on the basis of cross-party consensus and cooperation, but also of the urgent need to address this issue. We evidently need more dentists. There is no doubt about that. Training takes time. Um, it's great that we're looking at how we can retrain people, but can I really ask what steps are we taking to encourage the creation and set up of dentist schools across the country? You know, people want to come and work in this country and they want to train in this country. The NHS is a draw to patients and student, uh, students and, and, and medical uh, students around the world. We should want to be able to train them here and to encourage them to at least for a certain amount of time work within our system. What steps are also being taken to recognize um, the equivalent level of qualification that might be found in other countries to encourage them to come to this country? Um, I've men I mentioned it three times already, but just for added effect, I will make this point again. We need a robust response for rural and coastal areas. So could I ask the minister, if she is willing to, for cross for, for, on a cross-party basis, is to meet all coastal and rural MPs who have an issue with dentistry to discuss this because it is a significant point which I think from Cornwall to elsewhere in the country we are going to hear similar points about how we are really really disadvantaged and that's no disrespect to the members from York and Sheffield Central but it is something that I hope the Minister will be able to take on board because this is becoming more and more urgent. It's already been said and I'll sit down in a second Mr Chairman about the contract renegotiation more details on that and speeding it up. I don't think anyone wants us to sit here pointing the blame. I accept that Labour came in with this terrible, terrible decision in 2006. There you are, I pointed it. But what we want, what we want is that we want, the we, want the we want the solution and we can find the solution. And if yesterday's debate and this debate is anything to go by, there are sensible decisions that are being put forward. But really, the time to act is now because too many people for too long have been in significant pain. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Scott Benton.